when I went through schizophrenia years ago, it felt like uh, I had like this band around my head. It felt like, um, if you've never felt it before, it's uh, kind of hard to explain, but the way I describe it is like, if you put my head in a vice, like one of those wood vices, you can twist it and it holds the wood. People, you know, usually have them in their garages to like, if they do woodworking or um, it's like a vice, it keeps uh, pushing the wood together so you can so you can nail it or do something to it, right? It felt like there was a vice on my brain and it was like wrapped around my brain. And it felt like, a, in a way, like a, <clears throat> like a fake, uh, like a, like a, almost like a crown of thorns, but like a vice. And it was like, like a helmet kind of, right? Like this helmet that was on my head. And I, uh, I did everything to get rid of this thing. I mean, I was doing deliverance. I was praying every day. I was fasting. I was doing everything. And it, it would get better at times, but then it would attack me again. And I didn't understand it for many years uh, while I was going through um, deliverance uh, and, uh, you know, the transformation process and sanctification. You know, it's everything's a process, right? Transformation is a process. So I was, uh, I was stuck with this thing for a while. And I remember um, it felt like it was just condemning me all the time. And I couldn't get rid of it. And today I want to talk to you about that because there's people out there that are dealing with this type of thing and they, they think it's witchcraft. They, it could be a mental illness, they think, or it could be uh, some sort of certain weapon being used in a spirit. It could be chemical imbalance. You know, I don't really know, you know, I don't really know exactly uh, what your situation is, right? And so it could be a chemical imbalance that you're dealing with. It could be a spiritual attack, could be witchcraft, could be this, could be that, right? For me, I can only go through my experience. My experience was I came out of a cult, the Tony Alamo cult. I wrote about it in my book, uh, Becoming God's Friend, okay? I wrote about the parts of it, you know, coming out of the cult in this book. And a little bit in this book, Defeating Mental Illness. Today I'm going to talk to you about this book, uh, or the things that I'm talking about uh, could help you. This book could help you, that's what I mean, okay? If you're dealing with this band around your head, okay? Um, both books could help you, but I think that book could uh, help you kind of understand a little more about maybe deliverance, maybe you're, it's your first time uh, with deliverance or, or anything like that. So I was dealing with this band around my head, and it was so painful that I'm, I remember going home and... Uh, you know, I'd go to church and I'd feel better. I'd get prayer. And then all of a sudden this thing would just grab on my head and it was so tight and so tormenting. And it seemed like it was always judging me. Everything I would do is it, it would judge me on every little thing and it would get harder. If I did anything wrong, it was like harder. Right. And, um, and so I got out of this cult and then I, uh, started hearing, you know, I started hearing voices and all that stuff, and then I, I eventually got out of this cult, the Tony Alamo cult. You can look it up uh, on Google. They have a show on uh, Amazon. I think it's called Ministry of Evil. It's very, very mind controlled. I was in mind control in my early twenties, and so I had this thing on my brain for several years, and I'm thinking, how in the world? Um, what is this thing? Am I judged? Am I condemned? And man, I had everybody and their mother pray. You know, I did deliverance. I was part of a deliverance ministry. Uh, and it, it would get better. Then it, it would, you know, it was it was tormenting. It would get better, and then it would get worse, and then it would get better, and it would come back. It was like this ongoing fight. And if that's you, if you are dealing with something like that, I want to give you hope today that that thing isn't always going to be there. Okay? So if you are dealing with it right now, or let's say you have a friend that's dealing with it, send the video to them. If you have been fighting this thing for many years, you're going to get through it. And today I'm going to show, I'm going to tell you exactly what the Lord showed me concerning what I was dealing with. I'm not saying this is exactly you, but maybe this will help you, okay? So, in the cult, I was taught righteousness uh, by works, by my good deeds, by not doing anything wrong. I was taught righteousness in the realm of the flesh, okay? And so I got saved because uh, of Jesus Christ, right? And, but when I got saved afterwards, I immediately went into this cult 
and they taught me things that were um, basically law-based things, teaching me that if I broke any of these things, then I was condemned and I lost my salvation. So my salvation was, I was always in and out of salvation. And so I dealt with a lot of fear. And so if you are not secure in your, so number one, if you're taking notes, number one is if you're not secure in your salvation, if you aren't truly secure in your salvation, then you're going to, you know, you're going to always struggle in your emotions with fear and condemnation and all that stuff. You always go back and forth. And I have a lot of videos on our website to help you with that, okay? You have to get that. You have to understand that you, when you're born again, when you're truly saved, you understand that you were a sinner and you accepted the blood sacrifice. You were saved. You were born again, right? The blood sacrifice of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. You were saved. You were born again. You were sealed for all eternity with the Holy Spirit. He's the guarantee of your inheritance, okay? So uh, bouncing in and out of salvation and everything, that is, uh, that is one way that you can pick up a lot of fear and discouragement and uh, always feeling condemned, never feeling good enough. So you got to get in grace. You got to understand that you're no longer under the law. You're righteous by faith, right? Abraham believed God. And he was accounted, it was accounted him for righteousness sake, and he was called a friend of God. So you're a friend of God through faith in Jesus Christ, okay? And so <clears throat> I didn't learn this. I learned that my behavior dictated if I was saved or not. So I was always focused on my behavior. And when you fo start focusing on your flesh, especially when you're a younger Christian, the enemy uses your flesh against you and your emotions and all that stuff. And he takes you as a slave of sin, right? Because you used to be a slave of sin before Christ. And then uh, I was... I was young and Lord, I didn't understand. And so I got pulled into sin and then I would cry and feel condemned. And then, uh, and then this led to me starting to feel condemned and tormented all the time in my head. And, and, and then, you know, I was dealing with schizophrenia. I got out of schizophrenia, but I was still dealing with this band around my head. Right. So I wasn't hearing voices and stuff like that, but I still had this little band around my head. I'm like, what is this thing? And at the time I was uh, helping in a ministry. I was volunteering in ministry. I was working part-time. I was, uh, you know, I wasn't taking any medications anymore. I, I was, uh, I was a Christian. I loved God. Uh, I was still struggling with different uh, types of fleshly sins, uh, in and out. You know, just you know, not not practicing them, but like just struggling with them, like hating it. You know, and I just never understood that I was saved. That was the biggest problem. Your problem might just be that you don't. Understand that you're saved forever through Jesus Christ, your Lord, right? And so you're struggling with sin or you're struggling with something and this thing is condemning you for every little thing. And so you might think it's witchcraft. You might think it's uh, this or that. But I would say, I would say in my personal opinion, it's condemnation, okay? It's condemnation and it's most likely condemnation. In, in my life, I believe it was most likely condemnation. And so I can't say that 100% for you, but why don't you pray about it? For me, I felt like it was 100% condemnation. And the reason is, is because I was never 100% secure in my belief system that I was actually saved despite the struggles in my life. So here I was struggling and I would, uh, I would do something or look at something or hear something. And then I would immediately get sin focused. And then the enemy would put this pain on my head. And so I'd cry to God. I'd take communion. I'd cast out devils. I, I'd do everything, right? Everything that I thought I was supposed to do, but it was still holding on. And then it would go away. And then something would happen. I'd be like, oh, and I feel this thing again. I'm like, what is this thing? And then I would deal with people with it. I'd try to help people with it, but I didn't understand. I didn't understand why I was, uh, why I would deal with it sometimes. I was trying to help them the same way, like cast out demons, do all this stuff. It wasn't until I got the revelation that I died to the law. Romans, I believe it's Romans 7 and Romans 7. So what really helped me was Romans 6, 7, and 8, okay? I died to the law to be married to Christ in the spirit. So you die to the flesh, right? You're baptized into his death. Then you're risen to newness of life. So I died to the law, the condemnation, and I, I've risen to newness of life, grace, right? Love and peace, safety. So if you don't realize that you're actually saved forever, 
If you don't have that belief that you are saved forever and God has forgiven you of all your sins, past, present, and future, that by one sacrifice, he has perfected forever those who've been made holy. If you don't understand that you're truly saved, not by works, but by God's grace, not by your own works, but by Christ, and it's a gift of God. If you don't understand this, if you don't get that, then you're going to struggle here with this band thing. Trust me, I know exactly what it feels like. It's horrific. So I have a great empathy for you, for anyone dealing with that. And I'm not saying this is, you know, this is 100% you. Uh, this is just uh, uh, my own testimony. So hopefully it might help you or somebody you care about, okay? And so if you are somebody that, let's say, ministers to people or you are, um, you know, you have friends that uh, maybe a friend at church that deals with this, they come for prayer all the time and it's still there, you don't understand. Talk with them about salvation. They're saved, right, because they love Jesus, but they're still struggling with what? They're struggling with their flesh. They're struggling with these chains, right? And the chains were broken through Christ, and we need to believe the truth that sin is no longer uh, our slave master, right? It's no longer uh, uh, has a grip to uh, control us, right? It doesn't mean we're sinless, right? Like some people preach that you're going to be sinless all the time, right? It means that you don't have to go out and sin or be pulled by sin anymore, okay? So as you transform, you're going to sin less. So like five years ago, I sinned less than I did, you know, uh, now than I did five years ago, if that makes sense, right? So you're always growing in grace. Paul said, you're, I'm still not perfect, right? Because he's still got this flesh thing he's got to carry, right? Until he gets his new body in, resur in, uh, in the resurrection day. Okay, so, so think of it like this. So if somebody, if your friend or whoever you're ministering to has this thing, it's most likely they're not secure in their salvation. They have a works-based salvation belief system. And it, it could take a long time. Well, it took me a long time because I was, I was buying, you know, nobody really, I didn't, nobody really understood what I was going through. I never really met anybody who understood it. They all thought it was witchcraft or something, right? And maybe part of it was, I don't know. But for me, once I started believing that I am truly saved by grace through faith, and it's not a work. I did not do good works to be saved. And so if I'm saved as a gift, then my salvation is a gift. My eternal life is a gift. My behavior had nothing to do with it. And so when you take yourself out of the equation, you stop being self-focused. And when you're self-focused, you get into your emotions and you get pulled into sin with your flesh. Okay? That's your soul. So transformation of the mind is super important. You have to understand that you're saved 100% all the time. And once somebody understands that they're saved all the time, and they're not in and out of salvation, and they're not condemned, and God's not counting their sins against them, then the Holy Spirit can start living his life through that person. Okay? So to get people to do good works, right? You're always like, you know, you have to do good works to prove you're saved. No, no, no. Teach them their identity. Teach them that they're truly saved without having to do anything except what? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved, you and your household. And then through that love, because it's not as we loved God, it was God lo first loved us, see? And so once we realize the beauty of the cross, that it's about Christ and it's about his forgiveness, it's about his righteousness on our behalf, how beautiful the gift of salvation is, the gift of righteousness, the gift of eternal life, the gift of being called a son or a daughter of God. Then you start realizing it's about Christ and not about me. And then your works start changing because you have this heart transformation. So you want to do good works because the Bible says that they're preordained for you, right? God already has good works set up for you to do. And he that began a good work and you shall complete it to the day of Christ Jesus. So striving is always going to get you condemned, feeling condemned because you're in yourself. And when you're in your flesh, you're in the realm of the flesh, the realm of the world. And then you you make a mistake, then you feel condemned, then you, then you screw up, and then you get this band around your head that you feel like you can't get rid of and you've been fasting forever and you're trying to figure out the uh, the way to get rid of it. You're trying to get the generational curses out. You're trying to get this out. You're trying, But in reality, you have to believe correctly. Okay? That's my personal belief. All right?
because the word of God is sharp, right? Sharper than any two-edged sword. It's able to what? Divide between the spirit and the soul. It can divide you between your spirit and your soul. Soulish stuff, right? Soulish stuff is all, all the negative stuff, depression, discouragement, condemnation, fear, right? The spirit stuff, love, joy, peace, faith, kindness, humility. See, so you can divide yourself from it. But today I want to pray for anybody out there with this band on your head. I have great compassion and empathy for you because I know the struggle. Uh, you know, a lot of us uh, didn't grow up, uh, you know, in perfect households, right? I'm not going to dishonor my mother or father. I'm just going to say I didn't live in a perfect household, right? Um, they did the best they could. And so your, your, your family growing up probably did the best they could. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But what I want to say is... Uh, uh, we don't know what it's really like to have uh, an everlasting father that loves us unconditionally all the time. And so when somebody comes from, let's say, a broken home or they had a bad childhood or whatever, it's harder for them to understand the love of God, the love of the father, because they've never experienced uh, having, uh, you know, security at home or whatever like that. So some of us struggle with believing that God is that good, that father God loves me just the way I am. And that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for me, uh, to show me his love for me. And that he gifted me eternal life because he just loves me. Like, it's, sometimes it's really hard. And, and it's hard for us, some people, to receive forgiveness. You know, it's just, it's a little bit harder in your emotions or in your programming in your mind. Because you, uh, you were programmed that way when you were young or the relationships you went through or your trauma or whatever. So renew your mind on the truth that you are forgiven by Jesus Christ one time forever. It's the atonement you've been atoned for. Now, you're no longer under the law. You are to walk in love, and you're to walk in the Spirit, and you're to walk in faith. Faith in who? Jesus Christ. And then as you believe, as you start believing, you're forgiven all the time. You're saved all the time. You wake up in the morning. You, you, you remind yourself that, hey, I'm saved by grace and faith. His mercy is new every day. You continue on. You start transforming. You start being sanctified. You start going and going and going, and pretty soon... This thing has left your brain. You're not struggling with all those addictions anymore. You're like, wow, I'm really transformed. Why? Because I believed the truth. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So Lord, today I pray for every person out there watching this video, anybody with torment in their brain, Lord, I break the power of that through the name of Jesus. I agree with them for total deliverance. I command any evil spirit of condemnation or guilt to just come off their brain in the name of Jesus Christ. I drive that out of them. I command the chains to be broken by the name of Jesus Christ. Every chain be broken, every addiction be broken by the grace and love and power of God. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord, for releasing this person from torment and teaching them that they are saved forever because they call on the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Lord, thank you for delivering this person, setting them free, filling them with the Holy Spirit, blessing them with total freedom from any mental torment, helping them on their journey, helping them not walk in condemnation, but to walk in forgiveness, to believe the truth and to resist the devil, to submit to God and resist the devil. Help them, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, this is Nick Grimsman. Um, if you like my shirt, I got them at the web, uh, website. People like them, so I put them up on the website. You can get them. Also, my books are there, Defeating Mental Illness. I have that in Spanish, uh, English, Spanish, Ukrainian, and um, another one. English, Spanish, oh, French. There you go. So I redid the cover. Um, Publish it through the ministry, so you can get that on Amazon as well. We have an ebook. We also have an audio book if you like to listen, and my autobiography. Because a lot of people, you know, this is kind of small. A lot of people want to know more details, so I gave a lot of details in here. And you can get this is in Spanish as well. You can get all these at our website, thefathersfriends.org, or you can check on Amazon. We love you very much. Thank you for your support of the ministry, your financial support. Thank you for your prayers. Go to our website. We have a free app you can download currently. Uh, it's thefathersfriends.org. Um, I don't know everything. I'm just trying to help people on their walk with Jesus Christ, okay? I'm trying to help you grow in grace, help you grow in your identity in Christ. God loves you so much. Be encouraged today, okay? Bye.